Hey everyone, welcome back. We are doing my 2018 eye favorites today. Um, I'm doing it in a series. I mentioned it in the previous videos just because otherwise it would be a super long video. So I kind of like just I'm breaking everything up um, into, I think I'm going to end up with four different videos. So this is the eye video. Um, all of my favorites, eye favorites for uh, 2018. Um, I will have everything listed down below. Um, I will link all of the other videos in the description bar as they get put up. And other than that, if you would like to see all of my eye favorites of 2018, then just keep watching. So I think we're going to start off with, I usually have been starting off with how I apply everything, which is I obviously apply my eyeshadow before my mascara, but I want to do eyeshadow last. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and let's just go ahead and jump in with eyeliners first. I only have a couple of them. Um, the first one I have is by, I'm like dropping in everything here. Okay, so the first one I have is by MAC and it is the Costa Riche eyeliner. I really like this eyeliner. Um, it is a really pretty like deep brown eyeliner. Um, it goes good in the waterline, it stays. Um, I don't have any problems with it running or like gooping up in the inside of my eye and everything. And it goes good, especially if you don't want to use a black eyeliner um, and you want to use, you want it to be dark, but you don't want to be like stark, like like black where it's like super stark. And you want it to be more like neutral, I guess you could say. I always go for this one right here um, the because it's a really pretty like rich brown and it just sometimes just makes the looks a little bit more softer, I would say. Um, the formula is really good. It's nice and creamy. Like I said, it stays in the waterline. I really like that one. Uh, the next one I have is by Urban Decay. It's the 24-7 Glide On Pencil in Alkaline. This is a really, um, it almost looks similar to Costa Rica in a little bit, but it's really not. It is right here. That's uh, Costa Rica. This is Alkaline. It's, a, it's like a um, deep burgundy berry color. And this goes good. Um, in, it stays in the waterline. Um, I've never had any issues with the 24-7 ones by Urban Decay. Um, I've had quite a few over the years. And they all, like, in the waterline, they all stay. I've never had any issues. Um, but this one is a really pretty deep, like, berry burgundy color. And it goes good with really deep, smoky, berry eye looks. It's just a really, to put in the waterline, it's just a really, really pretty um, color and something different to use. Um, I don't know, I just think it's a really, I just think it's a gorgeous color personally. And it's just different instead of using, you know, your, the nude black or brown eyeliner. Um, the next one I have is by Maybelline. And it is the Lasting Drama, oh, it's Waterproof Gel Pencil. And this is in the color, what is it? Silken Turquoise, right? Is that what it says? It's really small. I don't have my glasses. It's called Silken Turquoise. This eyeliner is so creamy. And look at that color. That is such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. This is so creamy. I put this in my waterline and I'll put it on my um, lower lash line, like smudge it out and then into the waterline. I use this a lot. Um, I was used, I use this a lot in, like in the spring and summer when I'm doing a very peachy look with a with a really like bright blue color on the bottom lash line and I'm using the eyeshadow but I also use this with it and it's just oh, it's so gorgeous it just makes your eyes like pop this color and it's just it just makes me think of spring and summer it's such a beautiful color I need to try more from this line um this is the only one that I have in this line but this color is just is so gorgeous um, the next two I have, um, the first one I have is by Rimmel. It's the Rimmel Scandalize in Nude. This one is, I'm wearing it today in my, um, water, my waterline. Yeah, my waterline, my, yeah, right? Yeah, my waterline. I've been, just said it 17 times and now I can't remember what it is. And that's it right there. I don't even know if it's showing up. It's right here, right next to the blue one. Um, this is good to use like it just makes your eyes pop when you use a nude in the waterline it just it opens up your eyes and just makes them pop where when you use a darker color it like kind of like closes in the eyes this is a good one to have i have a backup in my drawer back here um it's just a really really good it's a good eyeliner for the drugstore and it's nude it stays on i have no issues with it and then the last one i have is a black one and this is by Sephora, and this is like all I, 
this is all I have left of it. I need to like, I mean, there's still quite a bit left, but I need to get a new one. Um, and this is the Sephora. I don't even know what it is because it's kind of pencil. It's worn, you know, sharpened down. Uh, the Sephora, I don't know, Contour Eye Pencil 12 Hour Wear. It's waterproof. And this is in the color Black Lace. So it's just a black. And it is just, this just stays. I put this in my waterline and this sucker does not move. It stays. I have, I have a couple other different colors of these ones too that I've gotten like throughout the years in my Sephora play boxes. And they are so good. This, this particular formula, it stays. Like it does not move. Like once you have it in, it is like locked in. It's locked and loaded. It ain't going anywhere. And it's such like, look at how black that is. It is like a dark, I mean it is black black. And it's just, it's so perfect. It doesn't, um, it doesn't go anywhere. And all of them too, they're all sharpened. Um, all the eyeliners I showed, they're all, you have to sharpen them all with a sharpener. They're not twist ups or anything. Um, cause those are kind of like the ones that I prefer. But yeah, these are all my favorite eyeliners for 2018. Now to try to get them off of my hand. We're going to go into, um, mascaras. And I have quite a few mascaras here. Well, I really don't have quite a few. I have quite a few of the same kind, sort of, if that makes sense. Well, let's just get, we're just going to go into it. Okay, so to start off, this is the year I rediscovered lash primers. And there was two lash primers that had, like, completely, like, I don't know, they're just, I just completely fell in love with them. I just like how they, like, volumized my eyes, lengthened, volumized my lashes, lengthened my lashes. They just worked great. And they're both by L'Oreal. The first one is the L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. Now this one is, when you open it up, this one is, um, it's a white, it's a white base with a white natural bristle, um, brush and everything. And it just, like, you put it on, it just lengthens and volumizes and everything. And then you put your mascara over it and it's just, your lashes look really good. The next one I have is also by L'Oreal, and it is the Voluminous Lash Paradise Base. This stuff, I mean, both of these I have repurchased over and over and over again. This one, it has the same kind of wand or brush as the Lash Paradise, but it is, I don't know if it's showing up, it's pink. So when you put that, the other one on, it's white on your lashes, this one's pink. Um, it has the same wand, it's natural um, bristle brush as the Lash Paradise. Um, the same shape and everything, and you put it on, and it just like volume, 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 lengthen. It's just, I mean, your lashes are like, like it's just insane. Um, I love them both. And then you put your mascara on after it, and you're good to go. As for lash, as for lashes, um, as for mascaras, the first one I have here is the Voluminous Lash Paradise. This is a definite, definite favorite. I have both the regular and the waterproof. I think I like the regular just a little bit more. Again, it's black, as you can see, it has like the same kind of bristle brush as the primer does. Um, I think I like the regular just a little bit more than the waterproof. The waterproof is very, well, this one's completely dried out because it needs to go into my um, bin over here. But it, it's, when you first get it, it's a very, it's a very, very wet formula for it being waterproof and I'm not a huge fan of super wet mascaras and I felt like this was like super super wet um but if you have lashes like me where they're just I used to have like really good lashes and I don't know what the hell happens <laughs> over the years and now they're just short stubby and they just like go they're just straight on so it does when you use the waterproof it actually keeps once you curl your lashes and put all your you know your base and everything on it keeps the curl and makes them look, you know, whoosh, like that instead of like straight, you know, out like that. So that's kind of why I like, I like the waterproof for, to be able to do that. Um, but I wanted to show both of them because they're both really good. I mean, but I do, I like the regular one just a tad bit more than the waterproof, but they both, the look that you get with it, unbelievable. And I don't really find any flaking with these. I know a lot of, I've heard a lot of people say about flaking. I think, again, it's, all preference, it's all what, you know, like, everybody's eyelashes are different, Every you know, everybody's different, so things are going to happen different to you than they are to me on different things, so I've never experienced flaking, but I really love that mascara. 
Um, the next mascara I have is by NYX, and it is the Worth the Hype mascara. When I first got this, I did not like this. Not that I didn't like it, I just, I didn't, I didn't not like it, but I didn't like it. Um, I don't know, I felt like it was a little bit wet, I guess you could say, and then I kind of like, let it set for like, it sounds bad, but I kind of let it set for like a month, and then went back in, I'm like, you know what? I went back into my, my mascara bin and I'm like, let me try it again. And it dried out. And let me tell you, once it starts drying out, this mascara, again, it's a natural bristle wand. Um, this mascara, oh my God, like the volume and the length you get with it is just ridiculous. Like it is so, so good. It can get a little clumpy. I will say that. But I just kind of like when I get clumps in them, I just kind of like take my little thing and you know, go through it or whatever. But this mascara is so, so good. Um, you just gotta, I mean, if you like the wet formula, you might like it right off the bat. I don't, and that's why like, I wasn't like super big fan of it at first, but after about a month of it, and then I went back in and it dried out, it was just, it is an awesome, awesome mascara. So I use that one a lot. Um, another one I use is the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. This is just a staple in my mascara. Um, this does have like a wire, it has the wire, is that what it's called, a wire brush? What is it called? Rubber brush, not wire, you don't want to put wire on your eyes. Rubber, like spiky brush or whatever. But it's so thin, and this stuff is, and I'm sure you've seen people use this and stuff and everything. I use this a lot if I feel clumpy, clumpy, if I feel clumpy. If I feel it, if I see it's like clumping, I'll go in, that's why it's called the clump crusher, and like, it like, go in and it gets all the clumps out and separates the lashes. But you can still keep your like fullness and everything from the previous mascara. It just goes in and separates them and fans them out and just makes them look really, really pretty. So this is a definite staple in my um, in my mascara bin. Like, I don't know how many I've gone through of these. Like 9, 10, 11, 12. Who knows? I've had so many over the years. It's just an awesome mascara. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, and this is probably, no, I have one other high-end mascara. This is um, the Tart Tartist Mascara. This one surprised me big time because once again, the wand, it's a rubber bristle wand, which I'm not a big fan of, but I've noticed when I use the rubber bristles, which is odd because I'm not a fan of the rubber bristles, but when I use the rubble, rubber bristles and I get it in there, I find, I don't know, like my lashes look a lot better than when I use a natural hair brush. It's just weird, but I always poke myself. That's why I don't really like these. I'm always poking myself in the eye, and that shit hurts when you get mascara poked in your eyeball. But it's just the length and volume you get with this and the blackness that it is, it's such a good, good mascara. Like, I mean, I like a lot of mascaras from the drugstore, obviously, as I'm showing you, but for, like, high-end, like, this one is just, there's something about it. I don't know what it is, but it just, like, it just works on my lashes, and it, like, lengthens them and like you get the volume and the cut like the darkness and I mean I like a clumpy lash not like super clumpy to where it looks like I have three lashes but I like the like the full clump you know I guess the full clumpy look or whatever I like it to look like I have like oh you know these full big ginormous lashes I've always liked that but this is just it's such a good mascara such a good mascara um the next two I have, I use mainly for my lower lash line, my lower lashes. And the first one is by Wet n Wild, and it's the Mega Length Mascara. And this one, as you can see, it's a rubber brush, rubber bristle brush, but it's super, super thin. So it will, like, get in there and separate your um, lashes down there, and it gives your lower lashes, like, a lot of length. So, I mean, this is a good alternative to the next one that I'm going to show you, which is the MAC Explet Expended. The MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash, which this, I've gone through so many of these too. Again, this is a natural hair brush. It's super thin and long, super black. Again, it's one of those that gets in there and just like separates and lengthen, lengthens your bottom lashes. But if you don't want to spend the money on this, which this isn't really that expensive compared to some mascaras. At least I don't think it is. I can't remember what the price is. But this I think is like $4.99. It does the exact, like, it, it's almost like it's a dupe. It does the exact same thing that this one does, and I really like it. And it just, like, I wouldn't use this on my upper lashes, but I do, like I said, my lower lashes. It gets in there, and it separates them, and it lengthens them. It's a good, good mascara. Um, 
Okay, going on to the next thing, and this one's gonna be really, really fast. We're talking brows. I have two products. The first one is the Essence Make Me Brow. I use mine in the color Soft, 03 Soft Brownie Brows. It is a dupe for the Benefit Gimme Brow. This stuff is like $2.99. I believe it's $2.99. It has a little, you know, natural bristle brush. You have fibers in there. You put it on the eyebrows. If it, you get the fibers, oh, it's catching a piece of my real hair though. You get the fibers in it and it kind of like fills in, you know, fills in the brows and everything. It colors the brows. Isn't that what you're doing? You're coloring your brows, you're filling them in, whatever. It just does the job perfectly. I'm not one that's really great at doing my brows, especially with like a pencil or a pomade or anything like that. Like, I don't know. I just, brows and winged eyeliner are like my Achilles heels. Like I just can't, I have issues with both of them. Um, this is just something, it's a staple. I use this all the time. I've gone through, I, double digits of these. I don't even know how many. I love this stuff. It's just easy. It just, it's easy for me. It makes my brows look good. I don't, it doesn't take long. It's not a big fuss and I like it. The next thing I have is um, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Gel. I put this on after doing that just to keep my brows in place because sometimes my brows will start going like every which way. And I just like, I have the, this isn't the full size. I just, I keep getting these in my Sephora play boxes. And I know some people complain in the Sephora play boxes when you start getting repeats and stuff. But when I get this one in there, I don't care because like I use it. Like I, I have a couple backups from what I've gotten in my play box. But I mean, it just put it in and it just, I mean, it literally, your brows stay in place with this. Um, okay. So that is everything for eyeliners, mascara, and brows. Now on to the fun category, which is going to be eyeshadows. And let me try to move all this over. Okay. I have a few eyeshadow palettes here. I, I have a few. A seven. I have seven eyeshadow palettes. This is in no particular order. I'm just going to jump in. Um, a lot of these came out more towards the second half of the year. Um, and they've just been something that I've been using ever since. There's one that I purchased more towards the beginning of the year and has been a staple um, throughout the whole year. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, the first thing, we'll go ahead and we'll start with this one. The first one I have here is the Milani. This is the Soft and Sultry palette. This is, you get a, like a huge mirror on it. And it's all, it's a cool tone palette. Um, it almost kind of reminds me of a little bit of like the Naked 2, the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette with some of the colors. But these like, I mean, I don't know. These are like gorgeous. Like, look at that. These colors are just, they're so pretty. Let me get some matte colors in here too. I don't know. Like they blend out really nice. Look at that. They blend out really nice. They just, I don't find them to get like super muddy or anything or, or like blend together. You can create, you know, some really nice looks with these, with this palette. I also have um, the Pure Passion palette, which is more of like a berry color, but I haven't even really used that one. This is the one that I like reach for a lot. I like, am so glad as you're gonna see, is that everything is moving more, to more towards cool tone palettes, which I noticed towards like that le second half of 2018, a lot more cool tone palettes were coming out. And that is like, I personally prefer cool tone palettes on my skin tone more so than a warm tone palette. Cause some warm tones, I just feel like when you're using like, a, you know, the reds and the oranges and everybody's all about like the reds and the oranges and like the orangey browns and this and that. I feel like I look, sick sometimes like it makes me look sickly and it's just all like this monotone color and there's no depth or dimension I don't know that's how I feel sometimes about it but cool tones I just feel like on my skin coloring they just look a, a whole lot better but this palette like I said you can get this at I think they only sell these either on the Milani website or at Walmart I got mine at Walmart um I believe at Walmart they're less expensive I think they're like a couple dollars less at Walmart like maybe like fourteen dollars twelve dollars maybe and you get um, 12 shades in it. So, I mean, it's you got a good mi mix of mattes and um, shimmer shades. And like I said, they're just, for a, being a drugstore a drug store palette, the eyeshadow quality is, is phenomenal. It is really, really good. Okay, on to the next palette. The next one I have is the Morphe um, G2 
Jaclyn Hill, The Vault Collection. I have all of them from The Vault Collection, and I like them all, but this is the one that I reach for the most. And this is the Bling Boss palette. I keep forgetting that they have mirrors on them. But this is the more all purpley one. This one, because these are shades like I gravitate towards. Um, and this palette is just, it is so gorgeous. Like, I, I know a lot of people were complaining about the quality of the shadows and then they stopped making it and they had to redo it and they send out a second shim. I, I don't know the whole, I try not to get involved in the drama. All I know is that my palettes work perfectly fine. All of them that I got, all, every single one. I don't have an issue with it. Um, they blend gorgeous. The colors in this is just like, I can't even like, it's so, like, look at that. They're just so pretty. And I don't know. And I love, I love that like, the color, I don't know, like the color scheme of it, like I really like the color scheme. Okay, this one looks horrible because of where the placement I'm putting it at. But the color scheme of all this is just like, again, it's, you got some cool tones in here and you got some warm tones. And it's like, you can make it more cool depending on what you use or whatever. And it's just, you can do a really deep, dark, smoky purple. You can do a, an everyday purple look. Um, it's just like a mauve look. It's just... I don't know. I just find that it's such it's such a good good palette and I've never like I don't have any issues with it like blending out or anything. Um and it's one that I like like I said I I grab toward I gravitate towards it a lot if I want to do like a purpley color or I'll mix it in with another palette that I'm going to show you in a second. Which would be this palette right here which is the Norvina by Anastasia Beverly Hills the Norvina palette. This palette, mm. this is like everything. <laughs> it is such a gorgeous palette and it's very cool. You got a lot of cool tones in here. Um, again, you got a lot of purples, pinks, and then you got like your mattes to like, you know, blend it out in the crease and everything. This palette is just, oh my God. I can't even like, her, the shimmer shades are just like ridiculous. They're just so, Pretty. Like, I like her shadows, too. Like, this formula, obviously, it reminds me of the Modern Renaissance, which is one of my favorite palettes. But I really didn't even pick it up a lot this year because all these other palettes that I have been using, I've just, you know, been gravitating towards these palettes and everything. Look at that. That is just so, like, look at how shimmery the shimmers are. They're just so beautiful. And the looks you can create with this palette is like ridiculous like you can do an everyday look you can do a super glammed out look smoky look like it's just there's so much you can do because there's you have you have your purples and your pinks and your golds but you have your neutrals in here too so it's like you can do a lot of different looks with this palette it is just oh I love that I love that palette and I will sometimes mix that one with the bling boss palette um, because of the purples depending on what kind of look that I'm like trying to go for and everything but it's just oh my god such a beautiful beautiful palette okay um the next one we have again by Anastasia Beverly Hills it's the sultry palette this is a true cool tone let me get that brush out here because I know it's gonna fall is a true cool tone palette I did a look for this I did a new year's eve what did I do with the new yeah I did a new year's eve look for this right no I did a holiday look with it it wasn't the New Year's Eve look, but it was, I did a holiday look with it with using this color right here, which is Cyborg and then Slate. And I think I used Noir in that and everything, but this is just such a pretty, pretty palette. Like the colors in here are just, again, gorgeous colors. You can do, you have your, you can do go natural. You can do smoky. You can do super glammed out like I did with that look. I mean, and the, you have all these beautiful, like this color right here, Ember, is this gorgeous like olive color. It is so pretty. This rose quartz color is like really pretty. Um, like it's just, I can't even like, it is such a good palette. Like her, I just love her shadows. Like I don't even know what to say. Like her shadows are just so good all the time. Like that's some of them right there. That's that cyborg, which is like, it looks like it's silver, but when you look at it, really, it's like a more, 
Let's see if I can build it up for you. It's a, a more of a like, it's a silver taupey color with like almost like a pink undertone. It's such a unique color. It's like, I can't even, it's so pretty. It is so pretty. But again, I'm like so glad cool tones are coming in. But yeah, and this is another one. Like I got this closer to the end of the year, you know, cause it came out what like October, I think it was, it came out September, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's one that I use. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite palettes. It's one that I use a lot because like I said, I like the cooler tones and this definitely has the cooler tones on it and everything. It is such a good palette. The only thing I'm like confused, like this color, this bloom color, I really don't know where to place it with everything. Um, so I never, I've, that's one, one of the colors I haven't used in this palette yet. Um, but I'll figure it out. The only thing is like this part right here, I've noticed sometimes some of the glitter, you can get it falling off, but it's not too bad. I think it's a gorgeous palette of the outside, the packaging of it and everything. Okay. Another one we're going to jump into. I'm going to take the brush out of it. Um, that came out this year. It was an addition into the Naked line. It's the Urban Decay Naked Cherry. This came out, oh my gosh, like look at that. Like all these palettes that came out are like everything that I have been like craving for in a palette um, with the purples and the berries and their cool tones. And it's just, I mean, they stuck, they stuck with the, you know, the Naked, the Urban Decay, um, the Urban Decay formula. Like, so the formula is like, you know it's a good formula it just blends nice the colors that like what you can get like the looks you can get with it and everything it's just such a good good palette like I can't even I've used this so many times like look at those are some of them like it's just unbelievable like I like the naked formula um I like the naked palettes I never got the smoky ones that really wasn't my vibe but I have all of the other ones. And when I saw them drop this one, not even like when they start giving sneak peeks and the, you got to see, I was like, I, like there was no, like I had to have it. Like I had, I'm like, that was just, I remember sending a text to my sister with the picture and I was like, look at this new Urban Decay palette coming out. Like I have got to get my hands on that. It is so gorgeous. And I just love like the berry colors and you can do different looks and I don't find it, again, Cause some of the colors can seem a little, you know, alike, but I don't find that I get anything like muddying together or anything like that. It's just a really, really, really pretty, pretty palette. Okay. The next one we have, this one came out in November and it came out just in time for the VIB Rouge. Was it, it was the second week of the VIB Rouge that it came out and it is the, and that's when I got it. And <laughs> it's the Huda Beauty, the new nude palette. Now this is what I say, this is like the epitome of a nude palette. A lot of people think of nudes as like, you know, your tans and your browns and the, you know, your natural colors. I see where she's going with this. Like I get the, I get the inspiration. I get it. I see it. It's the new nudes. Like these are like your new nudes. It's funny how berries and like mauve colors and pinks are all starting to become more of more wearable and more of an, an everyday look. So this is like your new nudes palette. And these, this one, this one, this one, and this one, these are her new formulas. What are they called? The, um, are they, they're called multi-reflective shadows. They are like, they almost, but the thing is like they, they almost remind me of ColourPop in a way because they kind of have like that wet feeling to them yet they they still have some grit in it like a regular eyeshadow like it's the craziest thing like look at that look at how pretty those are like this chat this palette I like just cannot I cannot put down it is just one that I just like I'm like what looks can I do what more you know because it's just so pretty um this is the one that I did the New Year's Eve look with and I believe I used this glitter right here which was infatuated which is like a berry colored but it has other different colors in it but this one right here kinky is like this shimmer shadow like look at that Oops, set that right there like that's it right there like look at that her shadows and her mattes are just like her mattes just like blend in like a dream let me like let me see if I can put this on right here 
Like, here's, like, the mattes. Like, they're just, they're so pigmented, and they blend. Like, I love her formulas. I have her original rose gold palette, which I never had an issue with. Like, I thought it was perfectly fine. Um, I don't have the new one, but I do have the Desert Dusk, which I love that palette. Like, the mattes on that. Um, I love her, and I have her mini ones, too. Um, her mini palettes, and they're just, I love her formula. But this palette, it just, like, when I saw it, I was like, mm-hmm, yep, yep. It was made for Stephanie. It was because it's just everything in a nude palette that I, I mean, I can see the inspiration. I see where she was going with it and I am here for it. I love it. I love it. Okay. My next and final palette. Okay. My next and final palette. I got this at the beginning of the year. Well, a couple months into the beginning of the year. And this is a palette that I have not been able to put down. Um, it is basically, it's my go-to palette. When I'm not using one of these, this is the palette I go to. I'm wearing it today, and I just have like a really like just natural look on my eyes today. But you can go really smoky, you can go colorful, you can, I mean, you can do whatever. I feel like if you're looking, if you're a beginner in makeup, and you're looking for an all-in-one palette that's inexpensive, and it's not going to break the bank, I personally would highly, highly, highly recommend this palette and it is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. Mine is so jacked up. It's like scraped and scratched and the writing's coming off. It's so dirty. I've traveled with this. It is just like it is look at how disgusting it is inside. It is so dirty. Um but I, I mean it shows you like I use this palette. Like I've hit pan on this one. I've hit pan on this one. I um I know I'm about to hit pan on another one. But yeah I mean this is just such a gorgeous, gorgeous palette. You have your warm tones. There's some cool tones thrown there. You have some colors. Like this is a palette that, like I said, if you're new to makeup and you want an all-in-one palette that's not going to break the bank, this is the palette to go to. The formula is, I don't even know what. Like I swear the formula in here is different. Like I have some older Morphe palettes. Like I have the 35O, the 35K, and the 35T. Which they're nice palettes, but I don't ever reach for them anymore because I feel like brands have like such improved on their formulas on their eyeshadows and everything. And I feel like I'm about to whack myself in the face. I feel like Morphe when this one came, like they improved their formula on these shadows. And this is just these shadows are so buttery, so creamy. They blend so good. I don't find them being patchy. Like they just I don't have any fallout. They're just really, really good good shadows like you would think you were using a high super high-end um, eyeshadow palette I love these pops of colors that Maybelline this Maybelline eyeliner that I was talking about earlier this one right here this is what I use it like I will put like these two I'll mix these two on the lower lash line and I'll put this in my um, in my lower lash and my lower waterline and then like I use like the tans over here like the softer colors in the crease and then I use this color right here in on the lid which is like this like gorgeous gorgeous like I don't even know how to, it's like, almost like it's a duo duo chrome it's like a pinky peachy gold color it's so pretty and it's so different like on my finger it's looking gold and now on here it's like a peachy color but it's just these are just ridiculous like they're the I can't even like let me get here let me get use some swatches here because like like look at that they just blend so nice they're so creamy and the color is just like look at that look at those colors those are like the colorful ones that one's not so much a colorful one but those are the colorful ones um let me see if I can get let me try to get a couple other ones like I just can't even like you have some good like warm colors in here like, look at, you got a couple of those warm colors in here. Let's do um, some of the mattes. Like, there's some of the mattes right there, these two. Um, like an eggplant brown. I don't even, like, right there. I mean, these are just, like, they have, like, glitter and everything all down me. Like, these, like, this is just, oh, my gosh. It is so pretty, like, and it's just, I don't know. I can't, I can't say enough good things about this palette. And, I mean, I know some people, everybody's going to complain about something. You can't make everybody, per, you know, happy or whatnot. But, I mean, 
I'm just telling you my favorites and what I like and what works for me. Everybody's skin's different. What works for you might not work for me. What works for me might not work for you. You know, it's just, it's the way of the world. So people can't get mad if you're like, you know, people get mad like their favorite YouTuber doesn't like a product that they like completely love. Everybody's skin's different. Everybody's different. Everybody has different preferences. Everybody has different things that they like and that they don't like. So, I mean, that's why everybody is different. That's the whole purpose of everything that, you know? But this palette is just, like I said, it's so dirty and it's so gross, but I wasn't going to clean it. But yeah, it is just like, this is the best all in one. This is like my top pick of 2018, this palette right here. Like I love, love, love this palette. It's like having Jaclyn Hill here in my beauty room with me every day doing my makeup, except she's not doing my makeup and she's not here, but we can pretend that she is. This is just, mm, I love, love, love this palette. So that is all of my favorite eye products of 2018. Um, I will, like I said, I will list everything down below in the description bar. I'll go ahead and link all the other videos as they've came out or come out or whatever. And you can check out the rest of them. There should be four. I've already filmed three of them. I'm going to try to edit and get everything up as fast as can. I'm going to go on to doing my lips. So there's one for like your foundations, concealers, powders. The next one was your face products, which was your bronzers, blushes, highlights. And then we did the eyes and now I'm going to go on to the lips. Um, but yeah, that is everything. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you like videos like this. If you haven't already, please hit that big red button down below and subscribe and stay a while. We would love to have you. And other than that, that is everything. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.